So topic eight, which is about acid, alkali, and salt. So in this question, the first one, which flow shows a pH of 0.1 mole per dm to solution of ammonia? Ammonia is an alkaline solution or a base, but it is not a strong base. It is a weak base. Hydrochloric acid, it is a strong acid. So if ammonia is a weak base, so its pH will be 11. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, so its pH should be 1. Sodium chloride, a neutral salt, so pH should be 7. And sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so a strong base pH 13 or 14. So which one it matches with? Ammonia is a weak base, 11. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, so pH should be less than 7. And uh, lower pH, which shows a strong acid, so it is 1. And NaCl salt solution, it's a neutral salt solution. That's why pH is 7. And sodium hydroxide is an alkali or alkaline solution. That's why the pH is 13. So C is the right answer. Two incomplete statement about the preparation of insoluble salts. So insoluble salts are prepared by ionic precipitation or PPT reactions. Dash can be used to prepare insoluble salts. So what we can be used? So precipitation can be used. So either A can be an answer, B can be an answer, C. Such as, so all nitrates are soluble. So this is wrong. Lead sulfate. So either B can be an answer or C can be an answer. So we can prepare lead sulfate because why not barium nitrate? All nitrates are soluble, so it does not. It will dissolve, so it is not an insoluble salt. This is a soluble salt, barium nitrate. So lead sulfate is insoluble. Most sulfates are soluble except barium, calcium, and lead. So lead sulfate is insoluble. The salt is collected by how we collect the salt because when we mix the two solutions with each other, as a result, what happened a solid is formed and how we remove the solid we remove the solid by filtration so filtration is there and then this solid which we remove we washed and dry so c is the right answer in question 3 copper to sulfate is prepared by reacting copper oxide. So metal oxide is there, reacted with acid, gives copper salt, water, and carbon dioxide. Which two pieces of apparatus are needed to obtain copper sulfate by this reaction? Copper sulfate is aqueous. Aqueous means it's a solution. So salt, we want to obtain a salt from the solution. So whenever we want to obtain salt from the solution, we should take a solution in evaporating basin. Then what we will do or <clears throat> what we can do because we supply the, we can carry out a crystallization. So after carrying out a crystallization, when we supply the heat energy, some of the liquid will evaporate and when it will cool down, the solid will appear or crystallization occur. So thermometer, we don't need thermometer. Evaporating basin, yes. We need a evaporating basin so we can remove uh, the liquid. So option which include evaporating basin, that is option A can be an answer or C can be an answer. Then, but we don't need thermometer. A one cannot be an answer because there's no need for thermometer. We don't have to check the melting point or we don't have to check the temperature of a solution. That's why A is wrong. So we are left with C as a right answer. So we need filter funnel is there. Why we need a filter funnel? Once the crystals will form, so we will use filter funnel and the crystals will be left on the filter paper. And what passes through the filter paper, that is 
filtrate and what left on the filter paper will be residue. So to obtain a soluble salt, we use crystallization or evaporation. And to carry out crystallization or evaporation, we need evaporating vessel. So we are not collecting a gas, that's why, even though a gas is given off, but we are not collecting a gas, that's why we don't need a gas syringe. In this question, aluminum chloride is dissolved in water. So if aluminum chloride is dissolved in water, it contains aluminum ion and it contains chloride ion. The resulting solution is divided into three test tubes. In test tube one, which row chose the reagent of uh, three tests, which could be used to confirm the presence of aluminum chloride. So how we can test the positive ion? There are two ways to test the positive ion. We can use aqueous sodium hydroxide, NaOH, or we can use aqueous ammonia or ammonia solution. And to test the chloride ion, we add nitric acid, add acid, and nitric acid, and followed by barium nitrate, uh, sorry, uh, lead nitrate or silver nitrate. So it will give white PPT with chloride. So what are the reagents which can be used to test Aluminium ion, so aluminium ion can be tested by sodium hydroxide or it can be tested by aqueous ammonia. And how we can test the chloride ion? Chloride ion can be tested by adding nitric acid followed by silver nitrate. That's why D is the right answer for this. In question five, compound X is crystallized, crystalline solid in an aqueous solution of X is tested. Acidified nitric acid followed by barium nitrate. So no visible change. If there is no visible change, because this is a test, this is actually a test for sulfate ion. If there is a sulfate ion, then it will give a positive result. So there, it means there is no sulfate. So no SO4 is present. So it is not a sulfate or even with a carbonate also. It will give a white precipitate, barium carbonate. So it is not a sulfate, not a carbonate salt. Then we add aqueous ammonia. Aqueous ammonia can be used to test the pre presence of the positive ion. And it is giving a white, white PPT, which is soluble in excess. If it was a calcium, Calcium precipitate does not dissolve. So we are left with zinc only. So D is the right answer. Because if it was a calcium, the calcium does not even show a reaction with aqueous ammonia. Like there is no reaction when calcium ion is there. With aqueous ammonia and zinc ion is present, it will give white PPT, which will dissolve to give colorless solution. So it is related to memorizing the ions present in the salt. In question six, aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to a solution. A white PPT is formed which dissolves in excess of sodium hydroxide. So which ion could be? So this is actually a test like the observation if aluminum ion is there. When we have an aluminum ion, it will give white precipitate. If it was a calcium ion, it will be white PPT. But that white PPT will be insoluble, does not dissolve. If it was a copper ion it will, with sodium hydroxide, it will be a blue precipitate, which will be insoluble. And sodium, there is no visible change. So A is the right answer, that white precipitate will dissolve in excess to give a colorless solution. Lead 2 chloride is insoluble salt. So how we prepare insoluble salt? That is by precipitation reaction or mixing two solutions. So by mixing two solutions, a soluble salt. So lead carbonate with hydrochloric acid, why it is wrong? Because lead carbonate is, most carbonates are insoluble. So lead carbonate is solid. Hydrochloric acid is aqueous. 
but lead carbonate is solid, so we cannot use A. The both substance should be solution when we are using ionic precipitation. Lead metal, so lead metal is solid. Hydrochloric acid is aqueous, so we cannot use. Aqueous lead nitrate, so this is a solution. And dilute hydrochloric acid, that is also a solution. So when we mix two solutions, a solid will form, which we can filter and dry. Why D cannot be an answer? Again, lead oxide, which is solid, and hydrochloric acid is aqueous. So whenever we want to prepare insoluble salt, a salt which is insoluble, we always prepare by using ionic precipitation. And ionic precipitation, we should have two solutions should be mixed with each other and the resultation, like resultant mixture, result formation of a solid. So why A, B, and D are wrong? Because lead carbonate is solid, lead metal is solid, and lead oxide is also solid. In question eight, sodium hydroxide is added to a solution to alter the pH. So sodium hydroxide is an alkali or a base. So base can neutralize acid only. So sodium hydroxide is an acid that is wrong. Sodium hydroxide will lower the pH. No, it does not lower the pH because if I add so an alkali to any mixture, like I add sodium hydroxide to any solution. So the pH of a solution will increase because it will try to neutralize and make it alkaline. So pH of a neutral solution is 14. That is also wrong. Neutral solution is seven. The pH of a solution before sodium hydroxide is added is below seven. That is true. Because first it is below seven, maybe any number, but it will be below seven. So it is acidic. And then we add sodium hydroxide, NOH. So when we add sodium hydroxide, acid will neutralize by the base. So D will be the right answer. A sodium chloride is dissolved in a distilled water, a universal indicator. So when sodium chloride is dissolved in a distilled water, what kind of solution will form a neutral solution? So a universal indicator is added. What is the color of a universal indicator? Because it's a neutral solution, so it is B. If it was an acidic, weak acidic, strong acidic, like acidic is there, strong acidic, red, weak acidic, blue, and weak, alkali uh, weak alkaline, it will be blue, and strong alkaline, it will be purple. So when sodium chloride mixed with water, because the solu resulting solution is neutral, that's why it does not, it will have a green color. Question 10, which reagent could be used to react hydrochloric acid to prepare silver chloride? So silver chloride is insoluble salt, and insoluble salt, what is the technique to prepare insoluble salt is by mixing solutions. So uh, B, C, and D all are written solid. So they are totally wrong. So we are left with A, that when we mix silver nitrate solution with aqueous hydrochloric acid, this will prepare silver chloride, the insoluble salt. So insoluble salts can only be prepared by ionic precipitation by mixing two solutions with each other. So the state of the two substances should be aqueous or solution so that we can mix them each other. Aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to solid X and a mixture is heated. A green, so an alkaline gas is given off. So whenever sodium hydroxide is added to any substance and alkaline gas is given off, it means this substance X contain ammonium ion. Because if there is an ammonium ion, there will be an alkaline gas given off. And a green precipitates are there. So the green precipitates are due to iron two and iron three is red brown, iron two is dirty green precipitate. So this gives an idea there is iron two ion present and this ga alkaline gas given off shows that there is an ammonium ion present. That's why A is the right answer. In question 12, aqua solution of organic compound methylamine has a pH greater than 7. 
which statement about the methyl amine is correct so if its ph is greater than 7 it means it's an alkaline solution so it will if it's an alkaline solution it will follow the characteristic reaction of alkali that when alkali is mixed with ammonium salt it will give off ammonia or it will turn red litmus blue or it can neutralize the acid it neutralizes the solution of sodium hydroxide that is wrong why it is wrong because sodium hydroxide is also a base and this methyl amine which is having a ph more than 7 that is also a base that's why no reaction here it react with copper carbonate alkali cannot react with carbonates acid can react with carbonate to give out carbon dioxide it react with hydrochloric acid to form a salt that is true because hydrochloric acid plus base gives salt so c is the right answer why not d it turn blue litmus red that is wrong that is not a characteristic of a base it is a characteristic of acid that acid turn blue litmus red the position in the periodic table four elements are shown which element is most likely to form acidic oxide acidic oxides are non metal oxide because non metal oxide can either be acidic so these a and b are metal c and d are non metal d cannot be an answer because they don't tend to react so we are left with c that is a non metal oxide or result in a formation of acidic oxide non metal oxide can be acidic or neutral and basic oxide uh, metal oxide can be basic or amphoteric in question 14 copper 2 oxide is added to sulfuric acid to make hydrated crystals of copper sulfate so we want to prepare the crystals of copper sulfate so first what we will do we'll take a beaker which is filled with sulfuric acid so beaker contain h2so4 or a sulfuric acid and we are adding calcium or copper oxide the base so when we add this base copper oxide react with sulfuric acid as a result it will form copper sulfate but these copper sulfate will be aqueous copper sulfate we don't see that because it is a dissolved and we will continue this reaction until no more copper oxide react so that unreacted copper oxide will be there this will be the unreacted copper oxide and all of the sulfuric acid all of the sulfuric acid is reacted now what happened first we should remove this copper oxide so if you want to remove this copper oxide first step i should use filtration the first thing we should use filtration the first procedure is filtration then after filtration the copper oxide will be removed now we will have a solution of copper sulfate aqueous copper sulfate or we can say copper sulfate solution we want to obtain we want to obtain the salt so first what we will do we will heat so when we will heat the what the water will evaporate not all because we want to carry out crystallization so some of the water will evaporate and the amount of the liquid in the beaker will start to decrease so second thing what we should do we should concentrate the resulting solution what is the meaning of concentrate the resulting solution it means like more increase the number of the particle in a unit space or reducing a volume so second step is to concentrate the solution so first was filter to remove unreacted copper oxide then concentrate the solution then we will cool down the solution when we cool down the solution a crystallization occur and the crystals of copper sulfate from the solution start to form then how to remove these crystals
if you want to remove these crystals out so we should again use filtration so one to one and then maybe some of these crystals may have some impurity like some of the water the solution the aqueous copper sulfate solution is there still so how we can remove we can simply wash this so as a result washing these crystals the impurities will be removed so d is the right answer so first we filter to remove unreacted copper oxide then we use crystallization to form why we are not heating the crystal because we want a hydrated copper sulfate if we heat the crystal then this water will be lost that's why we don't heat the crystal in this example so first whenever preparing a soluble salt he we will first filter to remove unreacted reactants then we will carry out a crystallization heat concentrate the solution then cool down and then filter it again after filtering again we can heat the solid but not in this example as we are preparing a hydrated crystals question 15 aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to two different solutions one form a green precipitate so the one which form a green precipitate it means iron 2 is there and the one which form blue precipitate it means copper 2 is there so that's why c will be the right answer so the this chapter mainly it's about identification of the ions that you have to learn In question sixteen, after titration has been completed, a conical flask contains aqueous solution of potassium sulfate. So there is a conical flask. It contains a solution of potassium sulfate and indicator. Describe how to prepare a pure dry sample of potassium sulfate from new solution of sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide. so what we will do the first step because this solution contain indicator we we cannot carry out crystallization for a colored solution otherwise the crystals will be colored so first step we will repeat the experiment without indicator that is first thing using the same volume of acid and so repeat the experiment without indicator using the same volume of acid and alkali then we will heat and concentrate the solution then we will cool down the solution and heat and concentrate the solution till the point of crystallization means till we will concentrate the solution until the crystal start to form then we will cool down the solution and then we will filter and we can dry the solid so that's how we prepare like we have a solution of a copper sulfate which contain a copper ion and sulfate ion and we want to get this salt out from the solution so first we heat and concentrate until some of the liquid evaporates and then we will cool down the solution then we will filter and dry then a dilute sulfuric acid is used to make salts known as sulfates a method consisting of three steps 
uh, is used to make zinc sulfate from zinc carbonate. So adding excess of zinc carbonate, why, why we are using excess of zinc carbonate, like we have a sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. So we have sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, and we add zinc carbonate. So what is the purpose of adding excess of zinc carbonate so that when zinc carbonate reacts with sulfuric acid, it will form zinc sulfate. Zinc sulfate is a soluble salt, so it will be there in a solution. And once all of the acid is used up, like sulfuric acid is used up, then there will be unreacted zinc carbonate will be there. So what is the reason, what is the purpose of using excess of zinc carbonate so that all of the acid react? Then we will filter the mixture. Why we filter the mixture? To make sure that like removing all of the zinc unreacted zinc carbonate, we are filtering it. And then we will heat the filtrate until the saturated solution form. And then we allow to form the crystals. So name a suitable piece of operators for measuring 20 cm cube. So 20 cm cube, we cannot use pipette because pipette is like fixed volume 25. So in this example, it will be a measuring cylinder. Two observations, because whenever carbonate react with acid, carbon dioxide gas, so we'll see bubbles, fizz bubbles, effervescence, and solid dissolve because we are adding zinc carbonate. So zinc, when zinc carbonate is reacting, it start to dissolve. Why it is important to add excess of zinc carbonate so that all of the acid react or to make sure all of the acid reacted completely or to use up all the acid. What is meant by saturated solution? So there's one file I already shared with you. Le learn the definition. So saturated solution means a solution which cannot dissolve or hold no more solute at a specific temperature. So solution which cannot dissolve solute at specific temperature. No more solute can be dissolved. Or solution which contain the maximum amount of solute at a specific temperature, we also call it saturated. Then we have to complete the state symbol most sulfates are soluble. So what will the state of zinc sulfate? It is aqueous. Because barium, calcium, and lead sulfates are insoluble. So state is solid. Rest all sulfates are aqueous. Like when the water is there, they're always dissolved. Name another zinc compound that could be used to make zinc sulfate. So we can use zinc oxide or we can use zinc hydroxide. Suggest why this method would not work with a barium sulfate to make barium sulfate because Barium sulfate is insoluble. So what is the disadvantage if we use, like we have a sulfuric acid. So we have sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. And we are adding barium, for example, oxide to sulfuric acid. It forms barium sulfate. So barium sulfate is BASO4, but barium sulfate is insoluble, does not dissolve. And same thing would happen, the unreacted barium oxide will also be there, which we are adding. So there will be unreacted barium oxide and there will be a formed barium sulfate. So it will be difficult to separate the two solids from each other. That's why it does not work. So the simple answer is because the barium sulfate is insoluble. That's why this technique will not work with barium sulfate. So barium, for insoluble salt, we should mix two solutions. Then lead sulfate is soluble, uh, insoluble salt. So how we prepare a lead sulfate starting from lead nitrate, 
and sodium sulfate. So what we will do, we'll take equal amount of lead nitrate and sodium sulfate in two different test tubes. So we take equal amount of lead nitrate and sodium sulfate in two different test tubes. That is one thing. Then we will mix the two solutions. It will form, the precipitate will form. Which is lead sulfate. Then how we can separate this lead sulfate, we will filter to remove lead sulfate solid precipitate then we will wash with the distilled water and then we will dry using a tissue paper so we will have two solutions one is one test tube contain uh, lead nitrate, which is a solution, aqueous lead nitrate. And the other test tube contains sodium sulfate, Na2SO4. When we mix them together, as a result, what it will form? It will form a PPT of lead sulfate, PBSO4. And how we can remove this precipitate by carrying out filtration left on the filter paper, that is the residue and what passes through the filtrate, filter funnel or filter paper that is filtrate. So this lead sulfate will be the filtrate, uh, will, will be the residue. And then we wash this residue and then we dry. So we'll obtain this lead sulfate. And the last part, what is the ionic equation for this reaction? Because we are preparing lead sulfate. So what are the ions react to form this lead sulfate PBSO4? So there is a lead ion lead 2 ion and sulfate SO4 molecular ion minus 2 give lead sulfate. Include state symbol, ions are aqueous, so this will be aqueous, this will be aqueous, and lead sulfate is insoluble, so it should be solid. So this was the test related to topic 8, acid, alkali, and salt.